Peter Gov. Welcome to China. Welcome to CCTV. Thank you very much. Back in 2003, Chinese President Hu Jintao visited New Zealand and met with the Prime Minister Clark. And they talked about FTA. And in 2004, a framework of FTA um, was signed. Now, right after Chinese New Year, you come to visit China. What are the major objectives you would like to achieve during your visit to China this time? Well, there's a range of things that I'm doing. I'm meeting, of course, with my counterpart, Minister Li, and I'll be meeting with uh, Vice uh, President uh, Zhang, and I'll be meeting with the Minister of Justice. So we'll be covering a wide variety of areas, but we'll be building up the relationship that exists between New Zealand and China. It's a very good relationship. It goes back a long time, and of course New Zealand will be the first country to negotiate a free trade agreement with China, just as we were the first country uh, to uh, make an agreement about the WTO uh, accession with China, and I think the first country to recognise China as having a market economy. We have a lot in common, we trade, we, are co we have complementarity, between our two countries and increasingly we're welcoming more visitors from China and of course we have a large domestic Chinese population and a large student population enjoying an education in New Zealand. Well we see a closer economic relationship between these two countries and we're also looking forward to see what's going to happen between these two countries regarding FTA. What are the benefits of FTA that will bring to these two countries? What are the pros and cons? Well, I think they're all mainly pros because a joint study was done on the effects of a free trade agreement between our two countries and it showed that it would benefit both countries in terms of the export from one to the other of goods and services. There is a net benefit. Our economies in many ways complement uh, uh, each other. We produce things that China needs, China produces things that we need, we each specialise in what we do best, and that is why international trade and facilitating international trade is so good for the world economy. We want an FTA with China, we also want a good conclusion to the WTO round, and we're hoping that this year will produce results in both fields. Well, you talked about tourism. Uh, as we all know, that 25 European countries have opened their doors to Chinese individuals who would travel to Europe. They don't have to join any travel agency right now. They could just go and apply visa and visit the European countries such as England. Now, what are the new policies and regulations from New Zealand that will help the Chinese tourists go to New Zealand and visit, you know, also for the New Zealand uh, tourist groups to ride on this big wave of boosting Chinese tourism industry? Well, I think it works both ways, and we're increasingly encouraging tourism in both directions. New Zealand has for a long time had approved destination status from China, and the number of tourists has gone up from, say, 10 years ago, maybe about 20,000, today uh, between 80 and 90,000. So there are no barriers for Chinese visitors coming to New Zealand. And they come to New Zealand to see the diversity of what New Zealand has to offer. The Alps of Switzerland, the fjords of Norway, the rolling countryside uh, uh, of, of Europe, uh, the, the, the geothermal activity, the geysers, the beaches, the outdoor recreation. It's a clean and a green and a friendly country, and I think that is what makes New Zealand so attractive to increasing numbers of visitors from China, and we certainly welcome that growth. That's wonderful that we think about these beautiful sceneries. Meanwhile, we also think about the educational opportunities. You see, uh, from the vast feedback of our program, there are a lot of viewers who are still in their high schools, in the universities, and parents of the students probably plan to send them to overseas for higher education. How do you think about the potential of the educational opportunity for Chinese students? Well, I think there's huge potential, Rita, and the potential is, first of all, uh, English is the first language of New Zealanders, and it's a good place to come to learn English language in a smaller country that is safe, that is friendly, that speaks good quality English. It's also a country that puts much emphasis on the quality of education. Thank you very much for joining us to CCTV International Biz China. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Rita. It's been a pleasure.